Going straight now to India Today consulting editor Rajdeep Sardesai who's being joined by Prakash Padukone and also Poela Gopichand on India's fantastic victory for the first time. Remember, India took home. Team India scales what is arguably the greatest ever achievement by an Indian sporting team winning the Thomas Cup. I'm joined by the two legends of Indian sport, the original master, Prakash Padukone, who really paved the way for generations of players and Pulela Gopichan, himself uh, an All-England champion and of course the chief national coach. Both of you All-England champions at different generations. Such a pleasure and privilege to have you on this very special occasion. Prakash Padukone, you first. You were in the team that reached the semi-finals of bronze in 79. 44 years or 43 years later, we won the gold, the Thomas Cup. Did you ever imagine in your wildest dreams that this day could come, that India would be the world champion in badminton one day, sir? That it so soon, maybe, uh, you know, I was confident it might happen after 8 to 10 years because uh, I think we were always weak in uh, paired events and, you know, we, we, were, we, we were producing, you know, one, one odd players at a time. So while we won the individual event, like the All, All England or the World Championships, I never thought as a team that uh, we would win and that too so early. I think full credit to the to the team. Uh, so it definitely uh, not a flash in the pan because they've beaten all the top countries. It's not just one country. You know, earlier I think, like you know, we've beaten Malaysia, but then lost to Denmark. We've never beaten two countries, uh, you know, in the same same event. So you could probably say that uh, you know we were lucky, you know, at that time. But uh, there's absolutely no luck involved here, and uh, the way we've uh, you know, beaten convincingly, uh, you know, in, in all the singles, doubles. Uh, I think we have truly arrived now. Uh, extremely happy uh, for, for for Indian badminton and I think uh, it's a red letter day in the history of uh, Indian badminton. It's a, it's a red letter day really for Indian sport. Pulela Gopichan, you were sort of more involved with the team, many of the players uh, you coach uh, in your academy. This must be a very special moment for you, uh, Gopi. Of course it is. I think uh, as a badminton player, uh, as a sports person, as an Indian, I think this is huge. I think uh, to have uh, something like a Thomas Cup uh, winning uh, is something enormous uh, for um, sport itself and uh, badminton in particular. And I echo what Prakash sir has said. I think... Um, we all uh, knew in some sense uh, the calculations were there that uh, if we we could do this, but actually to have all of them play uh, to their best, to their potential and to actually pull out those 50-50 uh, matches onto our side consistently uh, over a quarterfinal, semifinals and a finals, I think uh, this really is like a dream run for the Indian team. What, what what changed, uh, Gopi? Because, you know, we've had individual greats like you, like Prakash sir, the great Nandu Natekar. We've had individual geniuses in every generation. What has suddenly changed that we've now got all these young men players? Of course, the women are also there, but these three young men and a doubles pairing coming together at one time. What changed? I think the fact that uh, the depth of the team which uh, the Indian team has uh, actually, not many countries can boast of. And actually, to have Laksh playing the first actually means that you have a very strong second singles in Srikant and a third singles in Pranoy. And I think that makes it very formidable. Uh, many of the times, uh, we suffered because we didn't have a strong doubles to back us up because we were walking into many of those matches 2-0 down. Uh, with the uh, doubles uh, as a lost tie. But actually here, uh, we have a strong doubles pair of Satwik and Chirag uh, against anybody in the world. Actually, they stand a good chance. And that makes it uh, very commendable. And the moment you pull out one of those uh, first men's singles or first men's doubles, you almost look like a solid uh, team which can pull out those matches. And uh, that is what has actually happened. So it's coming together of the players at the right time. Uh, it's happened for the first time and I'm sure it's going to happen more often in the future. You know, I, all I can say, Prakash Ji, is that, you know, Prakash says that when in 1980 you won All England, 
you know, we thought th that was the Everest in a way that you had scaled. Uh, and then you, you win the Thomas Cup this time. Uh, many are calling it our greatest ever team uh, achievement. Uh, just want to understand the academies, the one that you set up where Lakshya Sen came as a young boy, Gopi has set up his academy in Hyderabad. How much of a difference do you think that's made, that this academy culture has enabled not just one or two stars, but so many young players to come together? Is that what has changed Olympic gold quest, the efforts, the sponsorship that's going into uh, sports like badminton and not just cricket? Yeah, exactly, uh, Radip. I think a combination of factors, like you said, beginning with the setting up of the academy way back in 1994, uh, you know, things were not looking up. Uh, you know, badminton was not, uh, you know, at its best. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, you know, in, in 94, I think our Commonwealth Games team was not cleared because we would not have finished in the top six. So you can imagine in the Commonwealth Games. So that was when, you know, we set up the academy. Uh, you know, then I don't know how many people remember, we had a kind of a fight with the Federation, uh, you know, the old uh, old guard was thrown out then, uh, you know, in fact, Gopi and Aparna were, you know, very young at that time, only 18, 19, you know, they stopped them from playing in competition, we had to form a parallel association, then we merged, of course, all that is, is uh, you know, I, I don't want to touch upon that, but I think that was the beginning, and immediately after that, 98, we did well in the Commonwealth, got medals, you know, where Gopi was the captain, uh, then 2001, you know, Gopi followed it up with, uh, you know, with uh, the All England victory. After that, I think we've not looked back. I think there was a gap of about nine years. Uh, you know, after that, I think, uh, you know, government has really helped with, with, with a lot of funding. You know, according to me, there's always been a lot of talent, uh, you know, but it was not getting the right kind of support at the right time. I firmly believe that, uh, you know, the support has to come at the right time. So many talented players earlier, would have probably made it, you know, to the same level had they, uh, you know, the same kind of uh, financial support which players have now. There were so many good players earlier also, but they could not make it, you know, because of lack of support. But I think 2010, when we had the Commonwealth Games here, you know, that time the, the funding went up. And uh, immediately after that, I think we have ne never looked back after that. You know, Saina came onto the scene. <clears throat> then the 2012... Uh, you know, <clears throat> the Olympic bronze, then Sindhu came on the scene, then Shrikant, uh, you know, then Gopi has been doing an excellent job of, uh, um, you know, leading the team. Uh, so I think academies, uh, I think, have played a major role. Uh, I think the difference being that, uh, you know, these academies, you know, being not for profit, have, have enabled uh, people from middle class and lower middle class to avail of the best, uh, you know, facilities, you know, at, at almost free of cost, not at not, no cost to them. So I think that is the difference between badminton and uh, I think the other sports, you know, like for example, tennis, you know, we've not been doing so well, uh, you know, unfortunately. But I think the major reason is, uh, you know, you know, both my academy, yeah. then go any others, uh, uh, some with government support, some with private support, uh, you know, have, enabled uh, people from tier two and tier three cities, you know, who are willing to work hard, put in the kind of effort which is required, you know, to come to, to move to Bangalore or Hyderabad and, uh, uh, you know, we've just provided them a, a platform. Talent was always there. And I think it's the combined effort of everybody, you know, like the OGQ or uh, Go Sport Foundation, corporates now. Uh, so I think I'm extremely delighted, you know, the way uh, the game has progressed um, and I'm sure, you know, there is no looking back from here. Uh, you know, we'll only do better. Um, I only hope, uh, you know, the players, uh, you know, take it, take it in the right sense, does not go to their head. Of course, we have, I think, a lot of talent uh, even down the, you know, down the line. Uh, you know, under 21, 18s, uh, the game is getting popular. So, on the whole, I think uh, Indian badminton is looking up. You know, it, it, it actually, it, for our uh, viewers, we must know that this is a game which in a way was invented in India, was once called Pune, uh, played by the British uh, in Pune and originally called Pune. So, there's a deep Indian connection. But you're right, the acad academies have made a huge difference. Laksh comes from Almoda. Uh, you've got Shrikant, who comes, I think, from Guntur. Uh, Gopi, you brought him uh, to uh, uh, Hyderabad. Uh, Laksh came to Bangalore. But... Gopi, this academy culture, you know, waking up all these kids at 4.30, 5.30, uh, 
Presumably, that's made a huge difference. I read a piece by you today where you said you barely had two Yonex rackets uh, when you went to tournaments at that time. Now, presumably, sponsorship is there, training, coaching is there. How much of a difference has that made, Gopi? I think overall, the general spirit of sport in the country across sports has actually been very good. I think, uh, as Prakash sir said, I think uh, 2010 Commonwealth Games was the beginning of uh, the kind of support. And uh, 2012 Olympics was also kind of a moment where Indian population generally looked at uh, sport, Olympic sport as something uh, or Olympic medal as something achievable. And in general, uh, the number of people playing the sport, the number of kids believing or the parents believing that their kids can actually take this up as a career actually has grown. And uh, and post that, I think uh, the overall sentiment of uh, sport has grown, the confidence in the um, in the uh, sport has grown and today we are seeing those results combined. Uh, you know, the, the reason I'm asking you this, Gopi, and I'll ask this to Prakash sir, first and you can both comment on it because, you know, we've always been seen as a cricket-obsessed country. An IPL player can pick up 15 crores for an eight-week uh, IPL uh, contract. Uh, a badminton player for the longest time would have struggled. I know Sunil Gavaskar's favourite sport outside cricket is badminton, but generally badminton was seen as an amateur sport in this country, Prakash Padukone. Has that all changed, do you think? Do you think when, when a young Laksh Sen's uh, parents send him from Almora to Bangalore or when uh, Shrikant comes to uh, from Guntu to Hyderabad, do they come with the idea that now we can play this sport professionally, parents are willing to send their children, make those sacrifices, Prakash Padukone, or do we still remain a cricket-obsessed country? No, we, we still remain a cricket-obsessed country, but uh, I think other sports are getting uh, you know their due. Um, of course, I don't think we will ever replace uh, you know any of the sport with cricket because you know that's a religion. You know, I think one has to be realistic. Uh, so it may not be possible, but uh, I think there is also something to learn from you know the way BCCI has marketed the sport. I think uh, so. Instead of you know a lot of people criticize cricket, but you know I take it uh, positively the way they have marketed the game. You know, let's say you know during Sunil Gavaskar's time, uh, you know what they were being paid, and you know how the game has grown now. So, who's responsible for that? It's the BCCI who marketed the sport, you know. So, while uh, 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 so, I think there is a lesson for all the federations to learn from from this. Uh, you know, for, there is scope for marketing. We can do that for badminton also. Mm -hmm. Leagues, then you know, IPL kind of uh, events on a regular basis. But you need to have people with people running the sport. Uh, so, it is definitely possible and uh, there is a lot of corporate support, there is government support, there is foundation support, uh, you know, the, so, the government has also come up with so many, you know, Kelo India schemes. It's not just, you know, at the top level, uh, people are getting uh, uh, support, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, even at the bottom level, you know, and not just, you know, a couple, it may be in hundreds, you know, badminton players are getting the, you know, fairly good amount right. of support. I think that that has you know enabled uh, you know like I said people from middle class and lower middle class to uh, you know to take this up full time. They are not they are not looking at IIMs, IITs, you know, going abroad. They are prepared to devote their full time. And in case they don't succeed, they are happy with uh, you know getting into a state un state uh, sector undertaking, public sector undertaking, because their aspirations are not big and they are willing to you know to to take that risk and uh, uh, you know to. Um, to further their career in badminton. But these people mostly are from tier 2 and tier 3 cities who move to, you know, where uh, the entire ecosystem is built, like Hyderabad or Bangalore. We need to have more such academies, you know, committed people, uh, because there is a lot of talent. We can do a lot more. I think we can probably, you know, be on par with China if we have similar academies, you know, in, in, in each of the zones first, you know, starting with there is so much of talent in the Northeast, you know, in the east, in the north. So all these people now have to move right. to Bangalore. Possible for everybody to move. So I think it's entirely up to the federation now to, uh, you know, to take advantage of this, uh, you know, situation and, uh, you know, take the game uh, forward. What was the turning point, though? Uh, you know, as, as Prakash is saying, you know, that there's been this huge turning point. But yesterday's match, what was the turning point, uh, Pulela, when you thought that? You know, we, we were going to win this because I was watching it right through. Laksh comes back from one game down. 
the uh, the double steam comes down uh, comes back from four match points down and even in the second game shrikant had a game point against him what was for you the turning point when were, when did you believe that we were going to win yesterday i think uh, yesterday's match uh, clearly was if you actually start to put pressure on uh, then i was almost certain that the indonesian team would crack and the moment laksh started to fight back and not give up and uh, he covered that deficit in the third game i think uh, things started to change and the moment you had 1-0 up i think you were in with a big chance and uh, momentum in a big tie like this helps and that i think uh, was for me the turning point of course uh, we were uh, we fought really hard we were brave we were lucky uh, we can say all this but i think uh, at the end of the day the the spirit to keep fighting and to keep the belief on that we go to win uh, somehow or the other i think that is what helped in each of those matches because there were times when they could have won those matches but they lost those points and then they came back again strongly without remembering those points which they have missed and came back to fight again i think that is something which i saw in the last uh, few matches uh, which has been very heartening and and you called it the real world cup what do you mean by that gopi where you know you seem to suggest that this is the real world cup forget about 83 2011 winning cricket world cups by 2011 we were already the number one cricket team yes 83 was a big upset uh, i am likening it to three events 1975 hockey world cup 83 cricket world cup and now thomas cup but you called it the real world cup what do you mean by the real world cup gopi i i think i'll let let people imagine it but uh, for me i think this stuff is real i'm not suggesting that the others aren't but i think uh, this for me is uh, in a cricket in a uh, football sense winning the football world cup i think uh, this is as big as it gets um, and uh, i could be biased towards badminton but uh, so be it uh, for me this is like winning the football world cup And, and you think, Gopi, this will encourage uh, children across the country, not just in uh, in Hyderabad, Andhra Pradesh, but across the country, to now gravitate towards uh, badminton? Are you seeing more and more kids who who want to play badminton before any other sport? I think definitely today, uh, as the as the number of courts across the country have uh, grown up hu uh, hugely. the number of players playing the sport i think just a reference uh, uh, rajdeep we actually have in each of our domestic tournaments at 13 15 17 levels we almost have 2 to 3000 entries uh, at the domestic uh, tournament level and this numbers used to be in two digits uh, till a few years back and i think that number of, uh, growing is a huge and not only that when i was playing maybe there were 30 or 50 or people in the country who played decent badminton but today you go to an under 13 event and you'll be surprised at the level which the kids play so the talent is huge the talent is deep and wide and i think it's only up to us how 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 well we can harness it you know uh, 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 prakash padukone uh, you were all yeah, today's indian know you as deepika's father my generation knows you as the one and only prakash padukone how would you like to be seen after today's thomas cup victory as as someone who handed over the baton to the next generation how would prakash padukone like to see this victory in the context of all that you achieved uh, when you were uh, uh, playing the game uh Uh, maybe you know the journey which i started probably has uh, ended here uh, uh, no i i don't want it to end here but uh, culminated in this uh, uh, you know in this victory um i think 1980 yeah was of course uh, you know an individual achievement but in terms of team uh, you know in, in teams uh, uh, team sport um i it, it couldn't have got uh, bigger than this you know like we said uh, you know we've always had individual players you know right from the 60s you know just just one player doing well at a time then it was two players then uh, you know maybe it was three singles players you know uh, or three or four or five six singles good singles players but weak in doubles so i think it's been a gradual process so which goes to show that you know like again i would like to emphasize that you know there is a lot of talent like gopi said you know the number of players 
you know, if we earlier we used to conduct all the 13, 15, 17, 19, uh, you know, events together, uh, you know, in, in, in one place. But now if we, if we do that, I think to combine total, I, I, you know, it won't be an exaggeration. It will be about 10,000 entries if we were to do 13, 15, 17, 19 events together, both wow. boys and girls together. So no way we can, uh, you know, uh, conduct. So it is. It wow. has to be split. The under 13, they do separately. 15 and 17, they do separately. Under 19, they do separately. So this goes to show the popularity of the sport. And you know, when uh, when the numbers increase at the bottom of the pyramid, uh, you know, there's bound to be you know more competition and uh, uh, you know better uh, results at the top. So I think that is what has happened. So uh, I think uh, we are on the right I track. I don't. Uh, you know, there is. There won't be any looking back, even if somebody wants to. But because I think the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, we are on the right track, and uh, I think yesterday's victory, you know, only adds to is the. That... We are going in the right direction, and uh, uh, de definitely, uh, I think one of the most important uh, days in the history of uh, Indian badminton. It's it, you know you are being very modest about your achievements and both of you have always been very modest. What is it about badminton and Indians? You know we have all the skill sets you know uh, that perhaps you require for badminton much more than perhaps in tennis, which requires more power and aggression at time. But is there something that makes badminton players more modest and people who can give back so much to the game, like both Prakash and uh, uh, Gopi Chand have? Prakash ji, is there something that makes badminton players so modest? Or is it simply the weather in Bangalore and Hyderabad that makes both of you such modest people, despite all your remarkable achievements? No, not really. I think generally people from the south are, uh, uh, you know, uh, more, more modest. Nothing to take away from, you know, people from elsewhere. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't think we make an effort, you know, to be modest. But, but, it but, just, just comes naturally to us. Uh, but but uh, uh, I think uh, Randeep the well you know because uh, I've been I, I I've been yeah please go ahead sorry I've I, you know I've been I, I've been reading the comments of uh, of Shrikant and and Pranoy and all the players after the uh, the match they seem so you know uh, elated about the idea of a team winning and that's my final question Gopi is that the big change that this is about a team you know. At the end of the day, to get players together to win a team event suggests how much the you know the sport is is an individual sport, but the glory is when you win for your nation. The tricolor, uh, you know, standing so high, uh, the national anthem being played, Gopi, that perhaps makes this even more special, isn't it? Yes, yes, I think definitely. There's nothing better years from now, uh, even for me personally. I think the All England might be on paper the biggest victory I've had. But in terms of personal satisfaction, the medal of the Commonwealth Games in 98, uh, I think that team medal actually gives me more satisfaction. Or the Thomas Cup uh, where we qualified to the finals, that gives me. So team medals give you more, more happiness and satisfaction. And today what Srikant, Pranoy, uh, Chirag and Satvik, uh, they've actually been uh, regulars on the team for a while. And they've actually started to take other people along. And that's great to see. And um, actually, each of them, uh, they were all here. And uh, literally, uh, they were announcing that we are going to come back with a medal. <laughs> and, and, and it's like unbelievable, the kind of spirit which they, uh, which they have gone with. And I think uh, that's something amazing to see. But also, when they were glitches in the team during the event also, I think... Uh, uh, somebody like a Shrikant uh, just took the lead, uh, I think, which was very good. And also uh, very, very um, good support from the support team and coaches present there. And also in general, as Prakash sir said, the general atmosphere for badminton is very positive. We have a federation backed by Hemanta sir, uh, which is very positive, which the players feel good about. The, the government has been super supportive. Uh, so this... Uh, there's this positive vibe which is there, which actually has made this whole thing possible. So I'll ask you both in conclusion, how did you celebrate? Uh, both of you are teetotalers, presumably. Gopi, how did you celebrate first? I think um, um, we've actually, with the family, um, 
at the academy every batch had a separate celebration by itself and um, i think we continued to celebrate yesterday was very busy with the uh, with the um, talking to the people but i think uh, this celebrations will go on for a while so when the players come back will you then uh, 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 there'll be another celebration is it gopi once the team is back we're definitely going to celebrate great i and i i so how do badminton players celebrate gopi cricketers pop champagne you know when kapil dev won the 83 world cup he says he went and took a whole uh, basket of the he took the entire champagne bottles from the west indies dressing room and they popped uh, bottles of champagne how do badminton players celebrate gopi i think uh, many of them it seems like uh, uh, love to dance as well but indian food seems to be the trick for many of them unfortunately that's where much of it ends also <laughs> they radip they celebrate by, by and, having and, and prakash sir you want to tell me how you celebrated uh, well i think uh, we had a very quiet dinner i had a very quiet dinner with my wife we went to a golf club and had dinner uh, no no celebration and no, no um, you know we've not gone out anywhere um, but i think we you know we were glued to the tv uh, you know right from you know i got ready half an hour earlier Um, you know, of late, I've not been you know following every every tournament, but uh, you know this one I was really looking forward, got ready, and you know I think I've not done that for maybe almost ten years now. Uh, but uh, uh, I think it was it was worth right. worth. And so once the uh, matches got over, uh, you know we just went and had a quiet dinner, a family dinner. No, no. I, I was wondering, uh, uh, Prakash, uh, the, Prakash sir, that maybe you would also pop a bottle of champagne at home. No, I also don't drink. I had uh, normally I have one fresh lime soda. Yesterday I had two, so so that is celebration for me. <laughs> <laughs> two fresh lime sodas for one. Gopi, uh, you know you're a very strict disciplinarian. I think when uh, Sindhu won her Olympic medal, you allowed her some ice cream only after she had won the medal. So are you uh, are you going to sort of allow the the Shrikans and the Satviks to sort of indulge themselves or not? I I think uh, Satvik will love his biryani. I think that's where he is. Uh, Shrikant will love his potatoes uh, and the uh, fried eggs and chicken at the academy. So they have got all their favorites uh, foods um, so much. But I I think what they have done. I, I know it really, truly deserves celebration. Um, this the one unfortunate reality of badminton is that they actually start off tomorrow with another tournament in Thailand, and they have to prepare and get back and play that. So it actually, uh, I, I wish we had a 15-day break where we could actually roam around the country, celebrate in each part, and uh, actually uh, do the things which uh, they really wanted to. But um, I think uh, they have too many tournaments and too many things to do. So it will be um, small celebrations and preparations again. And and you know I hope one day when they all come back, they are taken in a motorcade, given a true celebration. Uh, one crore promised by the ba bai and the government hope more sponsorships come uh, gopi do you think the young players therefore will after yes what happened yesterday be even more aggressive more uh, you know intent on winning these big uh, uh, events do you think it, like 83 was the turning point for cricket you think yesterday will be a turning point for badminton and all olympic sports gopi that there will be a sense that now we can do it yes indians can do it i think definitely uh, what we have seen today uh, yesterday is is really a transformation of uh, individuals um, playing uh, to actually believing and delivering i think uh, at the biggest stage this is possible is what the uh, badminton team has shown and uh, the kind of transformation which um, they have happened because uh, maybe 3 or 4 years back if you go to indonesia or malaysia or china and tell that uh, india is going to win the thomas cup in 2022 i think people would laugh at you i think uh, that is something that transformation is something uh, which uh, this team has shown and i think that belief 
uh, will not only change the or inspire more and more badminton players, but I guess more and more sports in our country as well. You know, I want to tell both of you that both of you, in a sense, represent the best of Indian sport. You have been great ambassadors to the sport, not only with your individual achievements on the court, but what you've done with your academies, the Padukon Academy in Bangalore, the Gopichand Academy in Hyderabad, you have transformed the sport, given back even more than perhaps what the sport gave you. And for that alone, uh, uh, Gopichand and Prakash Padukon, this nation owes you a huge debt. I can tell you I was emotional yesterday. I was in tears uh, when the tricolor went up and so were millions of Indians. So thank you Pulela Gopichan and thank you Prakash Padukone for all that you've done for Indian sport and Indian badminton. You've made us very proud as has this great Indian team. So thank you and maybe next time instead of fresh lime soda, you can try something stronger. Sure, sure, sure Radhi. Thank you so much. Nice talking. Like I said, we'll say an extra lime. <laughs> Thank you, Pulela. You can also, you can also have a little bit of extra lime. Yeah, you can put a little bit of extra lime. Thank you both very much for joining me on this very special show. Thanks for watching. Bye for Thank now. You. The news continues.